If you haven't had an opportunity to watch episode number four of Marvel's Daredevil, stop listening now, I may just spoil us, here we go. Two vicious Russian brothers working for Fisk strike back against Daredevil. Fisk moves to further consolidate his power in the criminal underworld. I gotta give this episode 10 out of 10 stars. It was one of my favorite episodes of season one of Daredevil. Um, we get introduced to William Fisk, who is, you know, aka P uh, Kingpin. And I can say that now um, without spoiling anything for uh, any listeners and all that stuff, because in episode uh, one through three, we were, how do you want to say it? They were raising the bar, kind of introducing him, you know, showing little sneak peeks and snippets of, of uh, Kingpin. But we, we actually get to um, to see him. And, and now you understand why you don't say his name. You, you don't mention William Fisk. You actually fear this guy, man. And um, his little assistant, the guy that is uh, dressed in the blue suit, um, really nice dress. He has the glasses on. Looks like the dude off of um, the bow tie man off of uh, Banshee. Uh, his name his name is Wesley, and they're they're how do you want to say it? Wesley doesn't really do much of anything because William Fisk has a temper, and he usually handles his own problems. He solves his own problems, man. And what I love about it is that it, it's always been known that Kingpin had a little awkwardness as far as with women, and he didn't like to be embarrassed. I remember stuff like that. If if his reputation was on the line and you did something to embarrass him, or if you did something to humiliate him, you know, he would retaliate by crushing you. And they showed the headbutt. They showed um, how much power he has. Like, literally lifting a guy off the ground with just pure brute strength. One thing that I, that I noticed and one thing that I kind of really loved about the series is tonight... On um, well, on this episode number four, not tonight. I mean, I've been watching this thing all day. But uh, Rosario, Rosario Dawson's character Claire um, mentioned to Daredevil, "You should probably get some sort of armor." And he said, "It would weigh me down. It would make me slow, or whatever." And then um, one of the Russian guys that that ends up getting killed by by Fisk actually slices Fisk, and it doesn't hurt him. It doesn't penetrate his armor. And what, that, that's what I really loved about that because I was wondering, okay, how are they going to address that? How are they going to show why or how um, Kingpin, being grounded in reality, how is he, um, you know, his, his impenetrable? You know what I'm saying? How is he so powerful and so strong where, you know, a hundred dudes can punch this dude in the stomach and nothing phases him? You know, he can headbutt a dude to death and nothing will crack his skull. I, I absolutely love that, man. Um, they showed, like, the, the viciousness and just the, the malice that was... Um, in, internally, um, part of his character, man, he crushed this dude's head using a car door, you know, and, and you can ops, absolutely, man, you can see like he was channeling this Gomer Powell, um, uh, Gomer Powell type of um, um, mannerisms, man. I don't know. I, I guess me being a fan of this guy and knowing what he's capable of and then remembering Full Metal Jacket, you can just see like he, he must have took something from that character because... Uh, Gomer Powell, man, whenever this dude got into his mode where he was, was, you know, lock and loading the weapon and then he, you know, shot Gunny and all that other stuff, you kind of feared Gomer for a little bit, man. And and I don't know, I, I'm not saying that, you know, Kingpin is, is Gomer Powell. No, I'm just saying, like, it was really, really reminiscent of that time, man. And it just shows you the skill that this guy had. There was another character that he played on, like, NCIS or SVU or, or one of those other um, cop dramas that he was on. Uh, what is it, like, New York Undercover or um, uh, NYPD Blue or something like that. And it was where he um, was really, really silent. And he didn't say a whole lot. And he, he, his breathing was 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 like very important in that scene. I remember like like what the hell? I remember just like like looking back away from the screen, kind of trying to get away from the screen because this character was just he was in it, man. He was in it, and I thought that tonight he did a great job, man. Okay, so um, enough talking about that. Let's talk about the episode. So the Russian brothers that we saw inside of episode one, a little bit in episode two, and then a lot in episode three, and we hear about them more and more. They're running this. Um, taxi service or taking over this taxi service 
and uh, they're using it as like a front for crime, man. Um, Claire, um, where Rosario Dawson's character, gets kidnapped by these guys because she is one of the witnesses to some of the crimes that happen in episodes one through three, um, and they have to go and you know pretty much take her out in order to find. Um, who this this do, uh, man in black is, this devil. They have to find out who he is and try to stop him. So they're trying to use different um, elements and different people that can, that can help him. Now, in episode like one or two, there was this kid on the stairwell that saw uh, Daredevil drop the fire extinguisher and knock that dude unconscious, and he lived. And um, that guy comes back in tonight, and he has a name, but I forgot his name. It's not really important. It's like Santino or something like that. And um, anyway, he helps the Russians out because, you know, pretty much the Russians just beat the dude. And then they tell him where Claire's location is. Um, Claire is uh, returns tonight, you know, helping um, Daredevil um, heal up some wounds. And, you know, he said that he was going to use her again. And, and they, they uh, stuck with that word as far as bringing her back as far as being uh, the cut woman um, for, for, Daredevil, for Daredevil. And uh, that's pretty cool. Um, you get to see that this really dark, sinister, you know, really comic booky fill and vibe scene man it's inside of the garage inside of the uh taxi service where they they pretty much bring her back to the taxi location uh, which was i think it was really stupid and probably maybe like i don't know um a russian mistake or something like that but anyway um it was almost like batman begins as far as you know you you couldn't see the attacks coming but you just saw the bad guy shooting and then they would get snatched into the darkness that was pretty dope, man. I'm not going to lie. So I, I really do think that Batman um, and the Daredevil do line up as far as how Marvel's using them. It's keeping it grounded, and it does feel Batman beginnish. It does feel really grounded, and I really liked how it was kind of fearful, man. You really felt like, man, this dude is, is a man without fear going against all these guns. He's just a blind man, and it was just crazy. Another thing that they showed in uh, the episode was how Daredevil, you know, runs. Like, it's crazy as hell. The dude is blind. Daredevil is blind, so how the hell does he run? They're not explaining that very well. Um, but when he does it, you're just impressed as hell, man. Like, the dude's walking with a stick, then all of a sudden he's like, oh, shit, I gotta go use my damn, uh, blind vision, I gotta start running. So he starts parkouring, jumping up buildings, and it's some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen. I mean, don't get me wrong, man, he's been blind for, I say he's at least 30 years old. So he's been blind for a while. Um, but, the, but, I don't know, man, I, I, I guess, I, I guess maybe they're... They're not allowed to show the blind vision, but I think that would really help out to, to hear or to see a visual aid of how he's doing this. Because sometimes in the courtroom, you'll see like uh, the, the light will hit his eyes just a little bit and there'll be like this red vision. It almost feels like it's trying to be like the daredevil vision, like using the hearing and stuff like that. And, and they showed how um, he was able to, you know, uh, use his powers or his his um, his knowledge or whatever to hear the heartbeat of, of different um, people in uh, in a previous episode of jurors and then try to help them um, stay true to justice and then tonight he was able to track down uh, Claire um, and almost rescue her just using his hearing you know like honing in on his senses almost like Superman like whenever Superman is up in the sky like in Superman Returns. He can, you know, listen in on the city and, 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 and you know, first it's like all this, uh, you know, just the noise of the city and then it goes down to like maybe just cars. Then it goes down to like people talking and then chatter and then chatter turns to actual individual conversations. And then those individual conversations turn into single person conversations or voices from people. And, and that's how he's able to do this, man. But it was, it, I don't know, it's just, it's really, it's really strange, but it's awesome as hell because you can't figure it out. You know, and you're just like, damn, they, this this really works, man. I, I love this goddamn series, man. I love it. It's so dark. It's so grimy. It's it's just, I don't know, man. You can really feel Hell's Kitchen being alive, man. All right, I'm going back into the episode. Um, Daredevil ends up saving uh, Claire, um, and the Russians are kind of embarrassed by that. One of the Russian brothers that you learn that they they they've been through so much hell, man, to get to where they're at today. They show you in like this this Russian prison where they escape, and then they're trying to come to you know Hell's Kitchen to kind of get a new start and rise up, man. But it seems like they're just they're just stuck inside of this this these these uh, grimy locations and inside of the the projects in the ghettos, man. And they want to kind of rise up. Um, it seems as if they have they're a little jealous of uh, of of Kingpin. Um, and they, they want answers, man, you know, to why things are going this the way they are, and etc. Anyway, uh, Kingpin goes on a date 
with the art uh, dealer, and this is one of the women that he like really, really loves and cherishes, man. And, and you know, he had the courage to ask her out. At first, she was like gonna deny him, and then she she's interested too. They went out to dinner. They're eating dinner, and then the, the Russian brother comes back in, and he um, almost threatens him and embarrasses him. And then the lady says, "I don't want to see you anymore." To Kingpin, so that kind of sends him into that rage. And then um, now we understand that you know the killing of the Russian guy, and then Kingpin having Wesley send the Russian guy back to his brother. The dead brother, you know what I'm saying? So he's going to send the dead body back to a living, you know, person. And that happens to be your brother. It's going to start a war. And then uh, at the end of the episode, Fiska says, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm counting on it being a war. I'm counting on the war starting inside of Hell's Kitchen. <clears throat> I don't know if that was just a breaking point for him as far as he tried to live a normal life, you know, or try to separate, you know, his life style from you know um his personal life and then now they just he just knows that they can't mesh at all so i guess now his whole thing is he's going to take over the city and have pretty much whatever he wants i'm pretty sure the girl the art dealer lady will come back in in a later episode and we'll just have to see what happens there um i love it man i really do i love everything about the episode and the show um we find out a little bit more um about um <clears throat> karen's characters karen and ben are now working together to try to take down the ally corporation and um, it's getting very interesting, man, because uh, <laughs> because we're learning that Ben, he's not a, he's not afraid. So he's like a man without fear also, but he's just a normal man, you know, and the way that he fights the crime inside of Hell's uh, Kitchen is, is by uh, using his newspaper um, as the, his um, his weapon, I guess, if you will. And uh, we'll see what happens, man. We'll definitely see what happens um, as far as anything else in the episode. Um, the the coolest thing about it, I thought, was how clever they were, Marvel, in uh, connecting the uh, shared universe, man. So you got a nod to uh, Thor and you got a nod to Iron Man um, at the uh, beginning of the episode. And that was talked by Wesley. He says... I don't understand, you know, pretty much, he's not, not in these exact words, but he said, you know, I don't understand why you're having so much trouble with a man in black. I can understand if um, it was a guy in an, in an iron suit or, or, a, uh, or a man with a hammer. And, you know, that, that just kind of connects all the universes. So you're definitely talking about Thor and Iron Man inside of that um, aspect. And that was kind of cool, man, because, you know, they didn't have to really say the name Thor or Iron Man. They just said it like that. So now that you know that the universes are actually connected. So, you know, it's a little bit hopeful for, you know, uh, Luke Cage and um, um, uh, uh, Jessica Jones and all the other um, different things that they're going to have coming out, you know, leading up to the Defenders. And um, we'll see what happens, man. We really will. I'm really excited about this series, man. And I can't wait, man. We're heading into episode five, which is called World on Fire. And I think that's going to be probably one of the craziest episodes. Right here, guys. Comment, like, subscribe. Um, if you did watch it, don't try to spoil too much. But if you do, that's fine, man. Um, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Right here.